I was going to do this as an in-person workshop, um, but in our computer rooms, we don't have Office 365 um, installed yet. So I will do a different version in person and put a 365 version up here because it's really interesting. We can do something really unique with it now with some newer features. And what we're going to do is uh, we're going to process this kinetics data by sampling it uh, linearizing it and finding a rate constant from the gradient of that linear graph. So first year chemistry students should be aware of how to do that. Uh, you can probably do that on this entire data set. There's like a thousand points to it. Uh, Excel will handle that. Most software that you want to do data processing with will handle that no problem. But maybe if this was 10,000 lines, 20,000 lines, even longer, you might want to truncate that data down a little bit uh, for either display purposes or something else. Um, so this is really more of an exercise in how to use some tools to sample this data and show off a couple of the newer features that can make that a little bit easier and more dynamic. So how we'd normally do this is say we want 100 milliseconds, 200 milliseconds, uh, drag down so it's a thousand and then we will go V, look up the lookup value, the table array would need to be A, B, let's do that. And then the column index number two, range lookup, false, double click that, uh, and then insert our graph. And what we've got is a sampled version of the one there. We're not gonna do that. We're gonna do something a little bit uh, different here. We're going to start with equals SEQ for sequence, hit tab to complete it. And what I want is 10 rows. I know there's 10 rows one column starting at 100 milliseconds and then jumping up 100 milliseconds each time. And if I press return there, uh, it shoots down the entire list automatically. No control shift return needed. That's officially depreciated now. Uh, these spill formulas are how it works uh, going forward. And what I can now do, I could use VLOOKUP, but I'm actually gonna use XLOOKUP, which is the newer one. And my lookup value is gonna be 100. My lookup array where I'm going to be looking is column A with all those times in. So I'm just going to select column A. Uh, I don't need to drag down any further. Excel's usually clever enough to not realize it needs to look up down a whole million columns. It will stop where there isn't any data. My return array, well, I want to return the absorbance in column B. Uh, and that's it. There are a couple of other options we could add, but we don't need to use them for now. And there we go, 0.82084. And if I scroll down to where it says 100, 0.82084, it's worked. It's pulled that number back. And we could drag that down. But do we need to drag that down? No, because I'm going to go to K4 here and do something really clever, put a hash at the end of it. And what you can see is that has now highlighted that entire column where that sequence formula has generated the numbers. It's picked all of them up. I'm going to return that. And there we go, I've now looked up all of those numbers. Okay, what if I want to change something? What if I only wanted five data points? I'm going to delete five rows, return that. It truncates to five rows. And look, it has now uh, changed this as well. This uh, has spilled down to match the exact same size of that as before. So that's incredibly useful. I'm going to just drag this to the right now. Um, and the same thing, I'm going to divide this by a thousand, but instead of dragging down, I'm going to do K4 hash. And there we go. There it is, uh, our seconds. Uh, so I'm going to do this properly. Do time slash milliseconds, time in seconds, A, then log of A, because log A is the linear version. And again, LN, and I'd normally type in this, drag it down, but instead I'm going to put in hash and that will pick up that whole dynamic array that we generated. I'm gonna return that and look, we've got all these numbers. Now, if I change this to steps of 200 milliseconds, well, it's shot over uh, the maximum amount and hasn't returned anything, but other than that, it has picked up the numbers and all the numbers will update automatically. Now I'm just gonna give myself a little bit of space at the top for a moment. Uh, now, what if I wanted to change this without going into the formula? I'm gonna stick 100 up here as milliseconds. Uh, I'm just gonna format this as an input to know that I'm, that's the one I'm gonna change. 
And I want to figure out how many steps do I need if it's taking 100 milliseconds. Well, the longest time, I could scroll down to find it, or I can just type in max AA. And it's 1,000 milliseconds. So if I divide that by this input here, I know I need 10 steps. Okay, now where I've got rows, I'm going to replace that with 10 steps. And the step, I'm going to do 100 milliseconds. And I'm going to start there as well. So now we're back to where we were, except if I change this, it automatically calculates that we need 20 steps to fill up the whole time. And it adds them and it expands down. So that's pretty good, isn't it? So now what I'm going to do is highlight all of this and stick in a scatter graph. We can tart this up later, but you can see that it is changing the number of data points. So I'll change that from 50, 100 fewer, isn't it? And of course, to make the linear data, I need to drag to there. And what I can do is I can add in my trend line I'm not going to add the um, equation of the line on there, but maybe I'll change that back to 100. It's, it's worked, hasn't it? Now, what we would normally then do, so I'm just going to come over to here for a second, we would want to do the line stats on this to figure out uh, gradients, intercepts, uh, and their errors, for instance. So I'm going to type in line ST. Now, the known Y values are my log values. That's N6. I'm going to again type hash and it's automatically going to pick those up. The known X values are the time. Again, I'll put a hash there and true, true. And no more control shift return. Just going to press enter. Uh, and what line stats will now do is I'll not just get the intercept and slope and their errors, but I'll get the other information uh, to do with the line statistics there. And that's all covered in the documentation. Uh, I can never remember which order they all come in. Uh, we just usually are interested in uh, those parameters and their, their errors for now. So I know that that is eh, two and a bit was roughly my rate constant that I... Uh, added when I created this data. This is not actually real data. Um, it is. It was an exponential decay with a rate constant of about two point something, with some noise added to it. So two point one plus minus point two is about what we'd expect. And again, if I maybe reduce that step a little bit to milliseconds, you can see the error goes down from point two to point one. Twenty milliseconds. It goes down to 0 0.08, so we can start sampling a larger amount of the data. If I do one millisecond, it's going to make a thousand steps. That's accepted the whole data, and as you can see, it's it's quite noisy now on the graph. This is only actually um, sampling the first few. So if we wanted to just subset, make a subset, we can do it that way. Uh, so that's the fancy interactive way that dynamic ranges work now um, and this will be quite exciting to try and apply this to some new things uh, later on.